famous man who was disqualified from competing for elections. Welcome and enter Dr. Akable Meza. Aka Blamiza of Ghana, tribesman who Risa Nianzu II. To others, he is the fat man, or just Doc. Blamiza says he is the richest man in the world, the sole beneficiary of a secret trust fund that last time he counted stood at 27 billion, that's billion dollars. But there is one small problem. The trust is so secret, so complex, he says that he needs financial help to unblock those funds. So he turns to investors, promising them a massive thousand percent return on their money. Put up one million dollars, you'd get back ten million. The mystery of Africa, the promise of instant riches. For hundreds of Americans who'd heard about his secret fund, it was an offer too good to refuse. When people found out that I had invested some money, they asked me, can I put money in? They asked me the story, and they were basically throwing money at me. Barry Ginsburg is a lawyer from Philadelphia, where Blamiza first started his operation. Together with friends, Ginsburg handed over nearly $2 million. I said to my father, I said, Dad, it's so outrageous. It's, it's got to be true. I mean, how can you concoct this story like this? What was that story? Where did the secret billions come from? They came, Blamiza said, from this man, Kwame Nkrumah, the late first president of the Republic of Ghana. Before he was deposed in 1966, after 10 years of rule, according to Blamiza, Nkrumah smuggled out tons of gold and some of the country's huge cocoa profits into Swiss banks. He then set up the Oman Ghana Trust, making his friend John Aka Blamiza its sole beneficiary. At least that's what Blamiza said. I thought that he spoke with sincerity. I uh, looked him in the eye and uh, he told me what the money was for. So you decided to invest. Walter Hodgick is a wealthy businessman from New Jersey who met Blamiza through friends in Philadelphia. How much have you put in over the years? Considerable. Considerable. Mm -hmm. I've heard seven million. Fair well, statement? Uh, considerable. You wouldn't wave me off that figure? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. How much of a return have you seen on your investment? None. Blamiza often told investors he was a close and trusted friend of Kwame Nkrumah. So close, he said, that in 1972, when the former Prime Minister of Ghana died in exile in Romania, Blamiza was right there at his deathbed. But in fact, the records show that in 1972, Blamiza couldn't have been in Romania because he was here at Greaterford Prison in Pennsylvania, serving a one- to two-year sentence for posing as a United Nations diplomat and defrauding a Philadelphia hotel. He'd stuck them with a bill for over $2,000. Although he promised investors a quick return on their money, for over 14 years, no one has seen a cent. No one, that is, except John Aka Blamiza, who lives today in London in a style that wouldn't embarrass the Queen. He can afford to. It's said, from Americans alone, he's taken more than $200 million. Go. Before he agreed to sit on his tribal throne with his scepter and talk with us, Blamiza said he had to carry out an old tribal custom to vow to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Have you defrauded people? I have not. That Oman Ghana fund is real. It is real. And they are paying. And yeah. it contains billions of dollars. Correct. And these people will be paid. Will be paid. Have you been able to give any of your 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 supporters a, a guarantee? That they do, do get their money? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, they have the guarantee. What, what is the guarantee? Mr. Bradley, my word is better than my bond. When I promise you that after giving me $100,000, I'll give you a million dollars, I will never, 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 never this all night. That's your word. That is my word. And Better it, than your bond. Oh, yes. Blamiza says the only reason investors haven't been paid yet is the difficulty he's encountered unblocking that trust. Every morning in London's Piccadilly, he arrives in a white Rolls Royce at the offices of the Oman Ghana Trust. 
outflanked by private British security guards, he hurries in to try to release those elusive billions. In his office, he reassures investors who are still believers. Over the years, I've been branded as a, a confidence man, a flim flam artist. I say I have not defrauded anybody. But how has Blameiza kept investors on the hook for so long? Excuses have ranged from problems caused by military coups in Ghana to the overcautious nature of Swiss bankers. And when investors got suspicious, he simply upped the return he had promised them. He said, I'm going to write down a figure on a piece of paper. If you don't like it, let me know. He wrote down the figure of $150 million. $150 million bucks? Yeah. You must have felt pretty good then. I did. I did. I, I felt very good. I thought it was coming to a close. Uh, we would be getting our money any day. And then what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. By 1986, Barry Ginsburg had had enough. He filed a complaint with the district attorney's office here in Philadelphia, claiming that Blameza and his American associate, Robert Ellis, had defrauded him and a group of other investors of nearly $2 million. Ellis was tried, convicted, and sentenced to a minimum of five years in prison. There is still a warrant out for the arrest of Blameza. Philadelphia District Attorney Ronald Castile says Blameza had long since fled the states and moved back to Ghana. But he was then picked up by authorities there. He was in jail in Ghana facing a, uh, a charge, as they informed us, economic crimes against the state, which in Ghana carries the death penalty, we were told. But he is such a confidence man that he was able to convince the Ghanaian authorities to let him out of Ghana once again and go to London to distribute this trust fund. The guy uh, can talk himself out of, uh, literally off of death row. Not only did Blameiza talk himself off death row, he even brought the man who arrested him in Ghana back with him to London to work for him. Or maybe he's just there to keep an eye on him. And now which agency are you with? The, I'm in the police. The police. Yes. But now you're here in his office? Yes, I'm a assistant in the whole program. So you're working with him now? Working with him and working with the government. What is your relationship with the government today? Is it good? Oh, yes. I'm a government official mm -hmm. of the Republic of Ghana. Is, is there a title that... A government official. But it's like minister of... Uh, no. Uh, with this, I'm attached to do, or is I'm instructed to do special duties. And those special duties relate to the fund. To the fund. Yes. That government position now gives Blameza diplomatic status, which means he can't be arrested in England or extradited to the United States. But the Ghanaian government has laid down a condition for this arrangement. Leave former President Nkrumah's name out of it. So now he does. Our former president has no involvement in the fund. Has no involvement in the fund. None at whatsoever. All. Not at all. These are mere suggestions from the public. I'm totally confused. Oh yes, you should be. Where did the money in the fund come from? From our from our ancestors. From your ancestors. Ancestors, yes. Where did they get so much money? So where did they get the money from? Yeah. Well, I cannot disclose it. Over the years, Blameza has shown investors dozens of documents to back up his claims. Oman Ghana Trust brochures list over 20 subsidiary companies supposedly set up to develop Ghana when the money comes through. But all of them exist just on paper. That was all part of the show. Um, they were parts of uh, the Rolls Royces, the palaces, the, the tribal robes, the retinue of retainers. They're, they're all part.